What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna be doing some late summer cocktails. And this is what I love about late summer cocktails. Summer cocktails are all about gin and vodka and tequila and shaken drinks. And you know, a lot of people kind of relegate the whiskey and the darker spirits to the winter months. And what's nice about these late summer cocktails is you can take those you know, winter month spirits, which, you know, honestly, I drink that stuff all year round anyway. I don't really subscribe to that belief, but you can take those winter spirits and you can put them into a refreshing context and really make some very interesting cocktails. So today I've got three really good, simple, easy to make late summer cocktails for you guys to wrap up your summertime. For the first cocktail that we're doing today, there's a bit of a story because we'd shot it previously and I got some details wrong and I wanna set the record straight. The cocktail that we're doing today is called a Garibaldi and we had shot a video on this cocktail but renamed it the Fall and Zoni. And we renamed it because I was under the impression that Brent Falco, my former bar manager at Cole's French Dip, created this variation on Vincenzo Erico's Enzoni cocktail and put it on the menu at Kohl's uh, and called it a Garibaldi. But when we were shooting the video, what we knew was that there was a previously existing Garibaldi cocktail, which consists of Campari and orange juice in a highball glass. So to make sure that there wasn't any confusion about the cocktail, we decided to rename it. But what I have previously found out was that the cocktail was not created by Brent Falco at Cole's French Dip. It was created by Richard Bocado for his bar Dutch Kills in New York City. And this makes a lot of sense because Vincenzo Erico was a former milk and honey bartender. And Richard Bocado is also in the milk and honey family. And one of the signatures of the milk and honey family is that they do very simple riffs on their own cocktails or on classic cocktails, and then they put them in all their bars. So when you go to a milk and honey family bar in various cities, you know exactly the product that you're getting and they're all very good. So today we're making the Garibaldi cocktail created by Richard Bocato for his bar Dutch Kills, and I don't know what year it was. Okay, first things first, we're gonna take some red grapes. If you have small red grapes, you're gonna wanna do six or eight of them into the bottom of your tin, and these are pretty small, so we'll do eight. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, one ounce rye whiskey, and one ounce of Campari. And we're gonna muddle the grapes a little bit. And of course, add some to our tin. Give this guy a shake. And then just strain it over a rock. Now I heard a little cracking in my ice and if you want to avoid that, you can temper your ice first, which I did not do. Kind of a rookie move, that's all right. I'm going to take an orange wedge and I'm going to pick a grape onto it like so. And then we can just add that to our cocktail. And there you have the Garibaldi. Let's give it a sip. And it's just nicely balanced and you get the Campari right up front, but you get a lot of that grape on the back end. It's not immediately apparent, but that grape kind of builds on your palate as you swallow. The rye whiskey is not completely lost in there at all even though the Campari is kind of the most prominent flavor. You get a nice acid from the lemon, balanced out by the simple syrup. It's a very refreshing cocktail and it's perfect for late summer. It's one of those things where, you know, you're using whiskey, which has largely been relegated to fall cocktails, but it's nice and refreshing. It's very bright. It's something that I could see myself sitting on the patio and drinking. So there it is, the Garibaldi cocktail. The next cocktail that we're doing today is called a Rainbow Sour, and it is from the godfather of the modern cocktail renaissance, Dale DeGroff. And it utilizes one of my absolute favorite low ABV spirits, Pinot de Chirante. Pinot de Chirante is a mistel. A mistel is grape must that has been added to brandy. Well, in the case of Pinot de Chirante, it has been added to cognac. And the story of Pinot de Chirante is actually pretty fascinating. I'm gonna tell you because, you know, it's a cool story. Basically, Pinot de Chirante was created by accident when a uh, winemaker accidentally put some grape must, which is the seeds, skins, and some juice into um, a cognac cask and then sealed it up and put it on a shelf. And then years later, when they opened the cask and they realized the mistake, they also realized that they created this amazing nectar of the gods and that's how it was created. It's very bright. It has kind of a savory flavor to it. It's uh, uh, like lightly acidic. Literally the flavor is something that I equate to the end of summer and so that's why we're doing it in this video. Anyway, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do, one ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup. We're gonna do half an ounce of apricot liqueur and 
The original one that he used was Marie Brazard apricot, but I could not find it. So we are using the Rothman in winter. We'll do half an ounce of that. And then an ounce and a half of Pinot de Charente. Another rocks drink. And this time we're just gonna prep our glass with some of those nice clear cubes. And of course add some to our tin. And then we're gonna strain it into our glass, like so. And I swear I didn't plan this, but this one also has a very close garnish to the last drink we just did. We're just gonna, I did that completely unevenly. Look at that. It's like razor thin on one side. Yeah. So you say, we're just gonna add that here and then we're gonna add a little Luxardo cherry to it. I'm gonna get rid of as much of the syrup as I can by just holding it here on the side. Ah, I was gonna pick it, but I was hoping that it would stand there and then I could pick it, but I guess not. Voila. The Rainbow Sour. Let's give it a taste. I don't know why it's called the Rainbow Sour. Probably because he worked at the Rainbow Room. Hm. Oh man. Let's talk about this a little bit. This needs to be talked about a little bit. Oh, it was nice and bright, very lemony, very sharp. You have the apricot from the Rothman in winter, giving you a little bit more sugar. And so what you basically have is the one ounce of lemon, and then you have with the half an ounce, each of liqueur and simple syrup, we'll call that three quarters of an ounce of you know sugar to balance it out, which is a nice balance. But then the Pinot de Charente gives it this bright, savory character. You can taste the grape inside the Pinot de Charente. It's bright, it's a little bit acidic, but then you have this like almost sharp savoriness to it or something, and you can taste the grape ferment. I don't know if saying taste the grape ferment makes it sound very, very, uh, very palatable, but Pinot de Chiron is something that you guys should absolutely seek out and taste. It is very good. It's hard to describe. That's all I'm gonna say about it. The Rainbow Sour from Del de Graff. It is a fantastic cocktail, go make it. So the next cocktail we're doing is called A Room with a View. It was created by uh, New York City bartender, Michael McElroy, co-founder of Attaboy with Sam Ross, former milk and honey bartender. And I'm doing it for a couple of different reasons. A, I got to kick around Italy this summer and one of my absolute favorite cities uh, that I stopped in was Rome. And what I thought was really funny when I looked at the, the name of this cocktail was just like Rome with a view, but like every single place in Rome that you go has a view. That city is just so amazing. They call it the eternal city for very good reasons. I've never seen a, a city that has preserved its history so well to the point where you have a building that's like 3000 years old and then all around it, a modern building has been erected and is just uh, refreshing to see. I'm a big history nerd, so I really love that. Um, and so I want to relive my room with a view. The cocktail itself is a low ABV kind of sipper, almost like a kind of a spritz style cocktail. It doesn't have any Prosecco, but uh, you know, low ABV sipper. And when you go to Italy in the summertime and you see that it's 96 degrees with 85% humidity, you, re you realize why people are drinking spritzes and pretty much spritzes alone and this spritz style cocktail. All right, let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do, Marius, to cut a lime. So we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, one ounce of dry vermouth, we're using Dolan, and I believe this is what Mr. McElroy uses as well. One ounce of Campari. And I'm just realizing now that this cocktail is so very similar to the first cocktail that we did today. Digging on the Campari for my, uh, for my end of summer cocktails, I guess. Take a chilled glass, add some clear ice pieces to it, like so. Give it a nice shake. I'm gonna take some soda water here. And we're gonna add it into our glass first. Just about an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half. And we're gonna double strain. Top it up with a little bit more soda. And I did not mean to do something that thin. Garnish with an orange slice. Let's taste it. Now I know that Campari and lemon go really well together, 
It's a pairing that you see quite a lot, but lime and Campari might be a little bit better than even that because the bitterness of the Campari and the sharpness of the lime juice go really, really well. This is gonna be a little bit more tart. We're using one ounce of lime juice, balancing that out with three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, which is allowing the lime juice to shine a little bit more, but there's some nice balance in there. And even with the strength of the Campari, you still do get a sense of some of the botanicals inside the vermouth. It's just a nice low ABV sipper. This is something that I want on a hot day. And the end of the summer is actually turning out to be pretty brutal. So there you guys have it. There's your crushable low ABV porch sipper, the Rome of the View. All right, guys, there it is. Three very amazing cocktails for you guys to wrap up your summer. And you know, what's really funny about these cocktails is that I had not made the connection that they all have orange sliced garnishes, but you guys are always talking about how you can double up on ingredients. Well, now you can triple up on ingredients. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on another time.